Hi everybody, it's Joe Chaffee, just back from a hard day's work. <laughs> now uh, I'm going to do a quick live stream uh, with an update. Uh, the uh, rapid strengthening has slowed a little, has slowed some. Uh, seems like we're starting uh, the last few hours. We've been uh, losing about one millibar an hour on the pressure. So it's uh, down to, uh, I believe the last thing I saw was 972. And I believe that's what it was. Uh, 972, that's correct. Uh, so, um, you know, there's still time this for this to strengthen at least to a strong Category 2 or even a Category 3. Um, landfall is going to occur sometime during the early morning hours on Saturday. And, of course, uh, we're going to have to see whether, you know, that it, when that slowdown materializes, how, how long that delays the landfall. And also the question of whether, you know, how far inland is it going to get? It may only get inland by a handful of miles, so it may take a long time for uh, this uh, hurricane to uh, weaken back to a tropical storm. And regardless of the strength, the big story, I think, through all of this is going to be the massive rains that are going to fall over a three-day period. It'll still be raining probably on Tuesday over a good chunk of uh, southeast Texas and maybe even a little bit further south than that. So um, let's roll on the uh, video now, and uh, you can see my cat just went behind me. All right, uh, there he is. All right, hang on one second, and here we go. All right, let's take a look at Harvey on the uh, satellite loop. Uh, and uh, you can see from earlier this evening, there was an eye visible there briefly. And then it looked like it filled in and also looked like there was a bit of a burst of convection there. Um, it's, it's moving toward the northwest. It's hard to see if you know, I, I could pick out what looks like the beginnings maybe of a new eye. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, bottom line is that the overall structure remains impressive here. Uh, as it continues up to the northwest at about 10 miles an hour. And there's still plenty of time because uh, on, on its present motion, uh, it's uh, going to take uh, the uh, route right up in here somewhere. So uh, the keys are going to be what happens when it gets inside of uh, 95 west and when it moves over that warm water eddy that it's getting very close to where water temperatures are well up into the 80s to near 90. So there's certainly uh, room here that it uh, could strengthen some more. Uh, but bottom line is, regardless of whether it strengthens or not, uh, this is going to still wind up producing big rains uh, across much of South and East Texas on the order of a foot or more, especially because of uh, the uh, forecast track by all the models with this slowing down. Here's on the water vapor imagery. Uh, you can see here uh, the core of... Uh, moisture right in there. The uh, Hurricane Center talked about a little bit of dry air that somehow got into the circulation. That may have slowed the uh, intensification down. Uh, we're uh, just a little bit, the rate of intensification down. We've dropped over 30 millibars in 24 hours. That's uh, not too shabby. So uh, I, a lot of times when these storms that are going to uh, intensify into category threes and, and fours, they do have these um, pauses. Uh, you get a long burst of intensification, then a bit of a pause, and then a secondary burst. So it, we'll, we'll know during the day tomorrow uh, for sure. Uh, and uh, here's the wider view on the wider satellite loop. Uh, you can see it right there, that eye appears and disappears. The track is still pretty steady to the northwest. We're also noticing, by the way, increase in clouds and convection from Florida down into uh, Cuba. Uh, with what will eventually be some sort of low pressure that will develop uh, in the uh, uh, just off the Florida coast. There's a new recon mission that just left uh, as of uh, midnight. And uh, when we look at the prior one, we'll take a look at that. If it'll load, it's not loading for me. Let's try because uh, I, I just had the same one. This was the uh, uh, prior. Uh, mission uh, and right in here here's where the center not, three measures as they uh, flew through here 972 was the last uh, uh, measurement that they had so it dropped two millibars it looks like it's it might be starting another one maybe uh, dropping at about a millibar an hour here 
uh, at least at uh, the rate that, that uh, we're looking at. Uh, and in terms of the flight level winds, uh, we do have a couple of wind barbs there that are in the 83 to 96 knot range right in here and next uh, close to that 972 pressure uh, right near the center. And you see the impressive winds coming in uh, inbound from the northeast from, from the northeast quadrant. Uh, very strong, large band of uh, 64 hurricane force winds right here in the purple. Not too much going on on the west side from the standpoint of the hurricane force winds, but certainly every bit of 45 to uh, 60 knots on the uh, west side. So we'll uh, look at the new intensity guidance. Kind of came back a little bit from earlier. We still have a, num a few of the models going to category three. Uh, the bulk uh, have them have it as a category two and then you know this slow weakening that occurs uh, to a tropical storm as it moves inland these are the various tracks from the hurricane models and they're all over the place this, i mean this really looks like such a mess with all these loops going on and you know you have a track that continues to the west northwest you've got these other tracks that uh, loop it around and then turn it to the uh, northeast over time. This is going to be a long, long weekend with this. And uh, here's the latest National Hurricane Center forecast, still forecasting this to get to a major hurricane status of uh, 110 knots, um, 125 miles an hour, takes it to 100 knots, uh, which would be 115. So that's a category three. And then they bring it up to uh, 125 just before landfall. And then this very tight loop just inland of the coast and then tracking from there uh, up along the coast uh, toward the Houston area by 7 p.m. Tuesday. So think about the fact that, you know, we're talking about landfall here sometime early Saturday morning and it will still be within a, a hundred miles of the landfall mark uh, three days later. So you know there's, there's going to be just drenching rains through <clears throat> all of East Texas. So let's uh, give a quick look to the uh, GFS. And, you know, it brings it down to a 948 pressure inland, just barely inland, then loops it around back to the coast east of Corpus Christi and back out over the coastal waters. And you also can see this low. Now, what I'm not sure of, I mean, it almost looks like this is a wave that's developing on the old front and, may, and not um, truly tropical in nature with what's off the Florida coast. So, you know, we have to be open to the possibility that nothing may come out of that other than a open wave on a cold front uh, but we have plenty of time to uh, see where that is going we'll uh, look at the nam let's go to the nam model tonight and i'll just go back you know the nam you can see all right by the way why you can't really use the, these models that they're not that reliable with respect to pressure because on the um first hour pressure that was reported as 983 was already 10 millibars too high from what's actually being reported i'm sorry what, what's being forecasted by the nam versus what's actually being reported it does take it down to about a 964 pressure actually briefly i think it gets to 958 comes uh, ashore and then just sits just inland of the coast and then comes back out by 84 hours, which is Monday. Uh, the NAM with the Atlantic system, maybe if you look at the structure of the radar echoes that it has, is a little bit more tropical looking or perhaps subtropical. And that comes off the Florida coast and then just kind of coils its way up northeast where it actually does bring some rain to coastal North Carolina out of this by Monday morning. You see where the big high is to the north. So you have a bit of a gradient that develops from central southern New Jersey on southward. Um, the key to all the, the track motion is going to be um, the upper air. And we'll uh, just jump on that real quick. And here is the new GFS. Now here's that trough that's diving down. Okay, And here is Harvey. And of course, this represents the Atlantic low. And it appears that that trough to the north is going to bypass Harvey. It's hard to imagine that it will, but it, it, it is. Even as far south as that upper low gets, uh, Harvey just kind of 
sits there uh, trapped between the ridge that's out in the west and this ridge in the east. You have this, you know, you have this jet to the north that it can't get to and the trough that goes down with this. You've got, you know, this narrow ridge out in the Atlantic and you've got the nose of the ridge on the Pacific side. And this is kind of stuck here in no man's land. Here is the uh, Atlantic low at this point uh, heading out uh, to the northeast. So um, we're going to uh, wrap it up at this point um, and uh, just give you the uh, eastern satellite. As you can see, uh, at least all this, here's a secondary push of dry air that's coming down uh, with the big high that's building, a little upper air disturbance ahead of it. And here's the Okay, hang on. We'll come back for a little bit of a chat here. <clears throat> All right, so I uh, pulled up while this was going on a few things that I'm going to add on. It's going to be a little sloppy looking here, folks, so just forgive me. Um, hang, in, hang in there one second. I'm going to... Go back to let's go to the satellite loop of Harvey, and in the meantime, just give me a second to load a, a, a couple of graphics here for you. Um, see if we could take a look at the water temperatures. Uh, here, here is Harvey, and in the red, this is water that is 30 degrees Celsius or higher, and you can see where Harvey is sitting is right uh, in the heart of that uh, 30 degrees Celsius or higher water. And there is a warm eddy that's just off the coast, uh, a little bit of ways off the coast that it's going to cross into. That's where the highest te water temperatures are. And then there's actually slightly cooler water right along the coastal shelf here. So if it slows down, it, it may encounter that little band of slightly cooler water right before it gets inland. So that's going to have some impact with regards to um, the strength when, it, when, it, when it's very, very close to the coastline. So give me one second here, and whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. So I want to pull up a, a rainfall image of the GFS uh, to show you what the new GFS does with respect to a rain, and we'll bring it up here um, right now. And here we go. So here's the GFS's rainfall forecast, okay? So all of the yellow here, the orangish yellow on up is 12 to 24 inches. And this is, by the way, uh, through, I, I went to the end of next week, but this is going, this so that we cover all of the rainfall that occurs with respect to Harvey. And you can see that the, you know, the 12 inch plus rainfall extends probably to about Lafayette in Louisiana, whereas the four and the four inch line is to about New Orleans. This is total now for the next uh, seven days. Uh, so, uh, you know, the bulk of this is going to be, uh, you know, certainly through Tuesday and all in here in this area that's in the bright yellow, that's 20 inches or more. I mean, these are phenomenal rainfall amounts uh, that are going to fall uh, out of this. And uh, one other thing I'll, I'll show you is uh, I happened to look at the Canadian and it just, it made me laugh tonight because here we have a model that loves to spin up everything all the time. And as far as Harvey is concerned, it brings it inland with a pressure of um, over 995. I mean, it literally never doesn't even recognize the fact that the pressure is down to nine, in, to the low 970s now. And for whatever reason, it, it just it just brings in uh, something that would be a moderate a tropical storm in terms of pressure. I mean, how how silly is that? And then, of course, you have to have the obligatory spin something up along the East Coast and it develops this thing into a category one hurricane southeast of Hatteras off the Florida coast. I mean, it, it's just phenomenal how that, this, that, that model, the Canadian model. And of course, by the way, I, I won't, uh, I, I'm not able to actually, I can hang on one second. If, if I'm, and I'm showing this just because of the fact that the model is just not good. Um, 
with with stuff like this. So let me just back it up. Let me just uh, save this and I'll post it up here in one second. So just give me. Um, all right, so 90. And once again, the uh, graphics are, are courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com, our favorite uh, graphic source. And okay, I'm going to save that. All right, so now let me load you the. Um, <laughs> I almost hate to do this, uh, but let me show you what the, the Canadian did here. I'm doing things on the fly tonight. Normally, I have this stuff done, you know, beforehand, but um, getting home late from work. This is what the Canadian does with, with the system along the East Coast. I mean, just wraps it up into a Category 2 hurricane and brings it straight up. So today, we wipe out Long Island, Southern New England, and all of New England. Can we get more ridiculous? Uh, you know, honestly, it's just insane that it does this over and over again, run after run after run. Somebody needs to really go in there and look and see what is the problem with this model. Not only does it spin things up way out in the ocean and you say, okay, well, it probably has an issue with trying to recognize um, strong winds in the upper layers of the atmosphere that the other models apparently see, but the Canadian doesn't. But I don't know what its excuse is when it's uh, in the short range and it's right along the coast. I mean, somebody needs to explain that to me. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to, uh, let's see. Pumps have been trouble with light rain in Metairie uh, with the rains in Louisiana floodworthy here. Again, you know, blue light, uh, that is going to depend on ultimately if a northeast track develops some models have it some uh, models don't paul if the canadian is canadian is onto something you know i want the powerball numbers okay because i just I, I can't accept it um none of the other models have it uh rich rothmansky i wouldn't be surprised if it borders on a high cat three before landfall due to the very warm waters yeah I mean, it certainly could happen opal did i remember with opal that was opal actually if i remember correctly was the first Category 5 hurricane when it when it occurred, and I believe that was back in the mid-90s. Um, that uh, was like was like the first Category 5 hurricane that showed up in a long, long time. Um, so we, can we officially rule out a landfall in New Jersey yet? Yes, Mark Carroll, I think we can. Uh, Trisha Lou, can you do a temperature outlook for the next seven days for the U.S.? Okay, I can't do it now. Uh, but I uh, will uh, try and do it um, when we get out of all this hurricane stuff. Most of the east is going to be, at least into early next week, is going to remain um, is is going to remain uh, on the cool side of normal. Kyle Lisa Joe Bastardi says the pattern there is it is there for this to come up the east coast only if the upper air trough that drops into the Midwest sharpens and 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 picks up the coastal low and shoots it up that's really what the canadian is doing it drops that trough and sharpens it up and lifts and 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 phases the um the system in the east let me see if i can uh, get you an illustration of that hang on one second uh i'll, I'll see if, and i think i can uh okay great this is perfect uh, I'll show you how this looks on the upper air. Okay, so just bear with me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, so I should have it now. Here we go. So here's what the Canadian does that is different from what the other models do. Okay. Uh, let me switch over to that. Uh, oh, boy. Now, which what file did I save this under? Oh, boy. It's tough getting old. Uh 
I got to find the file I should say did this on. Uh, was it this one? Yeah. Okay. So here's the Canadian upper air. Here's the trough right in here that that drops down into the Western Great Lakes. You see how it picks up that coastal system? It has a well-defined coastal upper low, and it phases the two and lifts it up and around. And it's 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 been trying to do this for the last several runs. The GFS is nothing like this. The European has nothing like this. So uh, I would suspect that it, unless we're gonna we're gonna play the game of a broken clock being right twice a day. Um, that's it. I can't see how the Canadian's view is going to be correct. Uh, I hope I don't wind up eating my hat uh, with regards to uh, that observation. Um, yes, 1995, Anthony Orr. Thanks for reminding me of the year. I, I knew it was in the mid-90s someplace. Um, Oki AG, uh, everyone on Ponds Full praying Harvey heads back out to sea and stays there. Okay, I just want to tell you that the new GFS, uh, after meandering it in Texas for three days, actually takes it straight north up through uh, uh, North Texas. And uh, I think it even took it, let me see if it took if it took the center up into Oklahoma. Hang on. Uh, actually, it brings it up into northeast Texas and brings rain into eastern Oklahoma and Arkansas, which is a new variation. Uh, of, of what the GFS has been doing because it seems like every other run uh, it's doing something different with regards to the ultimate outcome. Some of the hurricane track models take it inland and then take it north. Um, most do not do that, uh, but the GFS seems to have jumped on board on, on that particular bandwagon. We are going to see, you know, we're going to continue to see these this model volatility and changes um, every run. Uh, I think the best, you know, I think the Hurricane Center it has the best view, and the European, to me, has been the most consistent through all of this. So even the NAM has been better uh, handling this, I think, overall. Uh, disregard the, the pressure forecast, but everything else, it seems um, that it's been handling it well, and the, those two models are, are not showing it yet. Any signs of the eye? Let me just take another look at, look at the satellite loop. I, you know what? It's, I don't see one on the infrared. It, it's a little hard. Uh, it, it's a little difficult. In fact, I don't. I, I don't see one on the infrared at the moment. I can. I can put that up so that everybody can see that satellite again. Well, here's the wide view anyway. Uh, there we go. Let me just make sure it's the most recent one. There's the most recent loop here. And you can see the structure here is is is, is fair, still fairly impressive. Uh, the uh, recon is on its way now, but we're not going to have any new fresh reports that are going to be close to uh, the circulation for a while. Uh, last look that I saw on on that. Let me go see mission 16 into Harvey. Yeah, I mean it, it's just now. Um, Mission 16, which is the, the new mission going out now, it's it's just now going into the Gulf of Mexico. They're just doing the fly around. He's he's now south. Actually, he's coming around. I, I can probably put this in there. Hang on one second. Just give me a second here. Oh, they got some good winds in here. Wait till you see this. Hang on. Uh, hang on. Here it comes. The winds have really strengthened. And they're on the west side, too, which is really interesting. Okay, so here's, here's the latest recon flight. Right here in the white is 96 to 113 knots, and uh, he's he's flying down. I'm sorry, they're they're uh, east winds, up to 113 knots, right in here. 
That's that's very strong. So I mean, this thing is now pushing. You know, it's definitely at least from the wind seems to be increasing. So they may they may find a lower an even lower pressure on this fly around. Um, here's the plane. So it came down, and now he's going to go around, up and around. Um, we've got west winds here. The green is 34 to 40. The Here's the, cent the, the center with that light northwest wind and the light east wind. And then you go just before uh, you get into what is probably the center, uh, you know, the eye. The white is <clears throat> on the scale is 96 to 113 knots. And the purple is 83 to 96 knots. So you've got, you definitely have had an increase in the wind in the last few hours. So perhaps they'll find a pressure down in the nine, in the, in the, uh, 960s somewhere uh, when uh, they get when when they get close enough uh, when they go when when he goes up and around back into the uh, <coughs> excuse me into the center and uh, drops uh, the drop zone um, very interesting that we're seeing winds like that um, so it appears that uh, we are seeing some strengthening again here with um, Harvey at least from the standpoint of the wind. Uh, is indicating that. So we'll just wait uh, for a pressure reading. Uh, let me see if there's just any any more comments here. Yeah, it's definitely at least a Category 2 now. Um, thing is heading straight north to Canada. Yes, uh, my friends in Canada who watch these live streams from the Canadian Maritimes, uh, you know, m maybe you guys can do something and, and uh, uh, let your weather service know that they need to do something to... Um, to fix this news said he was watching a report 945 millibars I have not seen anything and I have not seen a new pressure report so um, you know I don't know what the you know I'm not saying I'm not doubting you I'm just uh, that, that you heard that but I don't see a 945 um, funny how I looked on Twitter says 99 wolves after I asked it and Matt Lowry Thing came up and said that it's closing in on a cat too. Well, it may already be past that. It may be borderline a cat, you know, 113, 96 to 113, whatever the, the specific number they measured, I don't know that yet. But uh, usually with the flight level winds, you want to take them down a shade. So 113 knot flight level wind would suggest maybe about 100 knots uh, at, the, um, at the surface. That's 115 miles an hour. So, um, you know, if that this could certainly be a strong cat too okay so james proctor you saw a 968 pressure okay so we've had a um a four millibar drop uh in the last couple of hours so that right maybe that the uh i always look at two millibars an hour as rapid strengthening so um perhaps we're starting to see um rapid strengthening getting underway so that could go on for at least another, you know, 12 to 18 hours of rapid strengthening. Uh, if it goes at that rate, you know, you can certainly get down into the low 940s or even into the 930s. White House says Canada is all-time best model sham, best model sham. No one like Canada. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, can I explain the term brown ocean? I've never heard that. Uh, they are talking about it as the land temp is about 88 to 92 inland. I'm not sure what a brown ocean is. Um, let me take a look. Um, just one second. Brown ocean effect. It's an observed phenomena involving tropical cyclones after landfall. They are commonly expected to lose energy when they make landfall, instead maintain strength over land surfaces. Oh, okay. So I think what that is in reference to is the fact that, and you, you'll probably see it in this particular case, because of the fact that the center is only, the center is going to move just inland. At least that's the forecast. Um, what happens is that the circulation, a good chunk of the circulation, the east side of it, remains over water. And as a result, uh, the weakening process uh, is... Uh, slowed considerably. I think that that's what it's referring to. I'm not sure about the context where you say the hurricane strengthens after landfall. The only time I've seen that happen is when you have some sort of extra tropical 
uh, impact, some sort of uh, upper air disturbance where a system is in the transition of becoming extratropical and it intensifies it in terms of the pressure. Uh, something like that happened with Hurricane Sandy, but I didn't hear a brown ocean effect being referenced with respect to that particular storm. I'm going to have to do a little more research on that uh, and um, see what I can find. Okay, uh, I'd like to see some specific examples of what, just exactly what they're referring to. Uh, 967.6, James Proctor, thank you for that info. I really uh, appreciate that. Um, Tropical Storm Faye was over Florida when it went up in wind speed. I wonder if that's what happened, too, with Hurricane Alicia back in uh, the early 1980s. That was a very small tropical uh, hurricane, uh, a very, very small hurricane. If you were west of uh, southwest of the center by you know, 20 miles you 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 saw 20 or 30 miles you saw very little wind and you know they had gusts in over 100 miles an hour i remember in, in, in downtown houston where all the windows wound up uh, being blown out of the big buildings because of it the extremely tight pressure gradient that occurred in that very very small hurricane um uh, domitron extratropical is that like extraterrestrial but in the ocean no extratropical means post-tropical a system that transitions over from a tropical cyclone to a non-tropical cyclone. So it loses its tropical characteristics where the um, strongest winds are near the center and the wind field uh, expands and spreads out. So you have a larger area of gales, but you have a, uh, a smaller area of strong winds and it's not near the center. The strong winds wind up migrating either northeast of the center or northwest of the, well north uh, well northeast or well northwest of the center that's that's what happened with hurricane sandy as it uh, as it moved in um okay so james proctor says if you want go to the uh, NOAA website and find the recon data so i can take a look we'll probably have it up now we're doing some now casting here which is always fun now, the last thing they have on the NOAA site is the old OB, which was uh, 972 millibars. Okay, I don't see the 967, but that was two out, that was at 0321, so we're coming up on 05. Oh, so in two hours, we've dropped from 972, well, this measure was 970, no, 972 uh, at 0321, so here we are now at 05Z. So in two hours, we've dropped five millibars. So that is rapid strengthening. Um, actually, I'm just talking right now also uh, with a friend of mine that's uh, down in, in, uh, in the Houston area, coincidentally. Ta Sandy was technically a nor'easter being fueled by a hurricane. Well, I, you know, I, you, I, you you can certainly describe it that way. It was a hurricane that transitioned over to an extratropical storm and, and basically exhibited uh, characteristics of a, a fierce nor'easter um, with a with with a tidal surge of uh, with a with, with a tidal surge included when the center moved inland. Now, Rich, that was the last that was the last recon vortex from th uh, two hours ago. Um, it's not this one. Let me see if. Okay, he's uh, hasn't flown back. I just punched up the recon again, and he's flying northeastward. Uh, so he's the the uh, recon people are are probably in the uh, they're getting ready ready to go up and around. I don't I, I don't know if we can uh, stick around long enough uh, for that. Okay, so O four four seven Z. I don't have that ob. Um, No, you know what, Kevin, I can't really tell you whether that, you know, you're, you're talking about a category five storms are very rare. You know, they, 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 they really don't happen very often. And, um, you know, you got to have really ripe conditions in the atmosphere. I, I, I don't, you know, I, 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 I'm not qualified enough to, to, to look that deeply. Certainly conditions are favorable for continued rapid strengthening and there's still time for this to get you know into the threes and maybe even into a four i mean it would really have to explode to make make a five i just don't know if there's enough enough time enough time to do to uh, to get there so i would i would say that there's you know the chances are, are of getting to a five are fairly low again i, don't, I hope i don't wind up uh, uh uh you know eating my words 
Uh, Dometron used to be rare now with climate change. Who knows? Uh, you cannot attribute um, the uh, inc incidence of a Category 5 hurricane, a single incidence of a Category 5 hurricane uh, into, um, you know, toward, toward climate change. Uh, you, you just you just can't. Uh, there has been, um, you know, we've, we've gone through, we went through a very active stretch of hurricane activity, but, um, you know, it's, it's hard to explain why we, we haven't seen many hurricanes actually, you know, hit major hurricanes hit the United States. We have not had a Category 3 hurricane hit the United States in 146 consecutive months, and that's the longest stretch we have ever gone. So I also would just beg to differ in, in the sense that, you know, we, we only know what we know since we've had reconnaissance aircraft. We don't know, you know, what's what happened before that. We certainly don't know prior to the satellite era, you know, that there have been, may have been numerous Category 5 hurricanes that may have gone missed uh, because uh, they achieved that status uh, while out open over the open waters and there was no nothing there was no one there wasn't a ship nearby to verify any kind of pressure how big do you think the cloud span will be does it have a chance of reaching chicago on no now you're being silly 99 wolves stop it um let me make sure i didn't get through uh 967 86 knots okay you're quoting numbers so i'm just kind of trying to get a context of where you know what you're looking at um, you know, he may have had a max flight level wind of eight, 86 knots, you know, that might be 86 knots where the drop zone is on the vortex data message, but it might not necessarily be the strongest winds. He may have found the strongest winds, you know, a little bit away from the center, judging from the recon shot that we had, uh, here, I'll freshen it up. Just hang on one second. And this also, by the way, again, tropical Let me, uh, See if we can get this to freshen. Oh, I can't. I have a straight image up. I'm sorry. So let me come back to me. All right. So you know what? I wasn't planning on doing a chat after this, but I guess I wound up doing a chat. <laughs> uh, it's been, um, <clears throat> you know, it's been a long night. Leroy Jenkins, what? Okay, there's like a big giant down arrow on top of your word. So I don't know what you're saying. If you could repeat your question, what you have an arrow pointing down, had a major hurricane in Texas in the last 12 years. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I even went back and looked at Hurricane Ike, which was uh, wound up weakening to a Category 2 by the measure of the wind by the time uh, it made landfall. So I, I'm not even sure uh, when the last time uh, yeah, I'm racking my memory. Maybe somebody knows. I used to be so good at remembering all this stuff, but then after a while, there's so much information accumulates over a lifetime. Your your um, your brain just starts to put it in, you know, empties the hard drive, and you don't remember this stuff. Okay, so you know what? Let's leave it at that, folks. Oh, Rita in 2005. Thank you, Anthony Orr. Rita was the last major hurricane to hit Texas in 2005. I appreciate that, Oki. Um, uh, glad that I hung around to have this chat. Okay, just upgraded to a Category 2. Okay, so we must have something new from the Hurricane Center. So let's take a look. Um, yes, 967 millibars, 100 miles an hour is what they're carrying. So they did issue an update statement here. Um, so we may be undergoing, you know, the second phase of uh, rapid strengthening. So let's see where we are tomorrow morning with all this. Uh, and in the meantime, why don't we all just get a good night's sleep and leave it there. And uh, we'll uh, next live stream tomorrow will be at 11 a.m. Eastern time. OK, unless I wake up tomorrow morning and see if we have a category four or category five hurricane, you know, then I'll jump on at about 830. But uh, if not, it's going to be at 11 o'clock Eastern time. All right. So everybody have a great evening. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And if you've lasted this long and you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, shame on you. You should subscribe to my YouTube channel. OK, four out of five. I don't even know. I was going to say four out of five uh, dentists surveyed recommend sugarless gum for the patients who chew gum, but something along those lines. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. And you'll know when I'm coming on either live or if I pre-tape a video and load it up on YouTube. Have a great evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here, and we'll talk to you uh, tomorrow.